What is the Feldenkrais method? If I were to ask 100 different people, I would probably hear 100 different versions of what the experience is like for them, just as you would get a, a unique experience of what it is for me. I can tell you what it's not. It's not about stretching. It's not about strengthening. It's not yoga. It's not Tai Chi. It's not massage, although I use the Feldenkrais method in my massage practice. And it's not a religious cult. <laughs> <laughs> it combines awareness, developmental movement patterns, the laws of physics, and repetition to create new, better, and more comfortable ways of moving. For some people, the Feldenkrais method might be about improving your golf or tennis game. It might be walking more comfortably on the beach or holding comfortably your grandchildren. For me, it's about maintaining my own comfort and flexibility as I age. The Feldenkrais method to me is like a movement-based Sudoku or crossword puzzle for your brain, body, and nervous system. From my perspective, the best way to understand it is to experience it. So if you are willing, let's try it. If you'll sit forward a little bit on your seats so that your back and your shoulders can move easily and effortlessly, uncross your legs and rest your hands somewhere in your laps. I'm going to be guiding you through the lesson, but you're in charge of your own comfort and well-being. So if there's any pain or discomfort, move less, move slower. Uh, even imagine making the movements. That sets up a neuromuscular connection that in itself can be beneficial. So that being said, Please begin to turn around and look around and behind you to the right as if to see someone or something within your own range of comfort. Find a spot somewhere where you can easily see it. Use that as a reference point. Come around to facing forward. Place your left hand on your right shoulder. Turn your head and eyes to the left as your shoulders and torso turn to the right. So your head and eyes will go in the opposite direction, turn around and face forward, and repeat that movement. So the head and eyes will go to the left as your shoulders turn to the right and come around to facing forward. And repeat that one more time, noticing if you're holding your breath, if your jaw becomes tight, come around to facing forward, now this time, fix a point in front of you. Fix with your eyes and keep your head facing forward. With that being said, turn your shoulders and torso to the right. So your head and eyes stay forward and then come around to facing forward. So go and come back. Go and repeat that movement and come back. Notice if there's a tendency for your head and your eyes to want to travel. Observe if there's any tension in your jaw or do your eyebrows begin to furrow. Come around to facing forward. And let's try that original movement. Turn around and look around and behind you to the right. And see if some of you can go just a little farther than you did before. Come around to facing forward. This time, with a uh, slightly open mouth, begin to move your jaw easily and effortlessly to the left and back to straight forward. And repeat that movement. If you'd like to give your jaw a little assistance, take your thumb and your forefinger and move your jaw a little to the left and back to center, a little bit to the left and back to center, only if there's no pain. The next time your jaw comes back to center, move your jaw to the left as your head, your eyes, your shoulders, and your torso turn to the right. So, 
we're upping the level of complexity here. So be easy, be gentle. You're only going to be able to turn your shoulders and your head and your eyes as far as your jaw will let you do it. So repeat that movement. And again, notice as the level of complexity increases, do you hold your breath? Do you try to push through the movement? Make it easy. Come around to facing forward. And once again, let's do that original movement of turning around and looking around and behind you and see if some of you are able to look a little farther. Come on back to facing forward. So begin to shift your weight onto your right hip or right sitting bone. And then settle your weight until it's evenly distributed again. And repeat that a couple of times. Shifting your weight, coming back. Shifting your weight, coming back. The next time you shift your weight, keep it on the right hip or right sitting bone so that your left hip and knee are free to move forward and back, forward and back. And notice if you're not fixing your eyes on me or something straight ahead, your torso wants to begin to turn. And lo and behold, your head wants to begin to turn as well around to the right. So coming around to facing forward again, Pausing, take a nice deep inhalation. Shift your weight onto your right hip or right sitting bone. Begin to shift or move your left hip and left knee forward as you turn around and look around and behind you to the right. And come around to facing forward. Shift your weight again on your right sitting bone. The left hip comes forward, left knee comes forward, and look and see if you're able to go a little farther. Come around to facing forward. And turn around and look around behind you to the left this time. And then turn around to the right and see how different they feel. So, <laughs> so for those of you who noticed any kind of changes at all, whether they be small or big, begin to think about how did these changes take place? Where did they take place? When did they take place? There is a saying that many of you recognize, that if you don't use it, you lose it. I'm not referring here to muscular strength. I believe muscular strength is certainly important, but that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about what gets lost or forgotten when your, your brain, your nervous system, and your body are not able to communicate well together in order to create easy, integrated, comfortable movements. Thank you very much for being willing to have this experience.